Hello and welcome to The Daily Whip, the show where we discover everyone is becoming a media company. On the show today we talk about how brand affects the style of your content. First things first, we were shooting a, a new video today uh, for an integration we've got coming up in about two weeks, uh, which was starring Hayley and a few others in the team. Uh, and something interesting is going on with Hayley today. The news is that it's my birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> I got these earrings. This bracelet from my friend Rosalyn. She got it from Poland, it's Baltic Amber. And oh yeah, I'm having a good day. I'm 26. 26! Not a day over 21. Woo! <laughs> is your birthday today? So it's oh, oh, shit. <laughs> Today in the office, a small group of us broke away uh, and did a session around Whipster's brand and where we sit with the, the customers and the market and everything else. And Something really interesting came out of it, which I think relates to uh, every company that is becoming a media company, uh, which is that while we were discovering a lot of the things that we um, had been have been working on about our brand for the last few years, and as we were consolidating them and we, we were thinking about what is our brand promise and how do we how do we want to be perceived by the market, how are we perceived by the market, and uh, and how we want to how we want to talk as a company as the people in the company. It made me think about how people choose to create content for their company in a certain style or a certain way, and that that style is um, is being affected by the brand that they are trying to put forward. So when you think about a brand that is trying to create a, a certain feeling, they might say say Volvo, right? They're, one of their words is safety. So so for for me, when I think about safety, I think about um, something that's solid, uh, dependable, strong, uh, maybe maybe not so jittery, just a, a little bit slow moving, but solid. So if you think about Volvo making some content, uh, say video content, and they were to do um, really short, jovial, handheld, bouncy clips uh, that were then, say, put on Twitter, you know, instead of somewhere else. And, you know, they were five seconds long, they were handheld, really badly shot, and they were, they were going for this, like, reckless mood. Um, that wouldn't be part of their promise. Their promise to, to you as the consumer of their products is that safety is, is what's happening. So if they think about their, um, as we were saying yesterday, your, your secondary product is your content. If they were to create content that diametrically opposed their brand um, statement and their, and their brand promise, then it would feel, it would feel strange. And so I think this is an interesting thing, not only for the brands to think about, but also the vendors, the, the agencies, production companies, freelancers, who, who I talk to every day, to, to think about how you are going to choose the style of content for your customer and go, all right, how does this, how does this customer of mine, how does this brand or, or, or other company, how does, it, how does it present itself to the market? What are its words? What are, it, what are, the, what are the statements it says that it lives by? And how does that make me think about a style? How does that make me think about a technique that can be applied um, to uh, video or or storytelling through audio or or design or posters or anything? And I think this is a really important thing because because um, it it can be it can be it can go wrong so quickly even if you're not thinking about it. So I think an unconscious decision that's happened is maybe um, Uber. If you look at the front page of their marketing site at the moment. They have a whole lot of really nicely photographed people, uh, and I think think the intention is that is that you know that here are these great people that will drive you around in their in their cars. These are the drivers. Come and meet the drivers. Um, but I think I think what's gone wrong there. It's almost the reverse of what I was saying about Volvo, is that they've they've done the photography so well. Uh, it's got beautiful depth of focus. It's got Booker. Uh, the color grade is perfect. It's all it's all tweaked. It's it's gone so perfect that you kind of lose that that human nature that you're trying to get with Uber, that you are getting into a real person's car and having a real connection with that person for a short period of time and then you're off again. And this perfection of, of the creation of the content that they've put on the front page, just some photographs, has maybe accidentally or subconsciously has, has made their drivers seem at arm's length. Uh, it's almost to the point where the photography is so good it makes you think it's stock photography. Uh, and that means it's inauthentic and it's um, it's not honest and, and all those other things. Um, whereas, whereas if they had got the um, the drivers to maybe take a selfie of themselves 
with their own phone and then send that in and you and you had a, a wall of these selfies maybe sat in their car or sat outside the car or sat in town somewhere where they like to be that would have felt um, very much more in align with what the what the brand is trying to be you know one one of the pieces there is that is that it's um it's it's a bit of a, a like a, a social network in the sense of the drivers and the riders they're all together and they they enjoy each, other, each other's company um, and that's like an honest real connection which is being uh, dissipated by uh, the the too perfect photography um, and then and then you look at a different version of this so then you go somewhere like um, Airbnb and you have a look at their homepage and a lot of the photography is really really good and then you go well that's that's kind of fine because what Airbnb is doing is not trying to make a personal connection between you and the person who owns the house they're trying to sell you a dream of going somewhere which is very homely but all of the activity around the home so when you arrive you're not just in this room uh, but you're also going to all the events around it so they've got great photography of of things happening around town food travel all those other things and they've also made this beautiful beautiful series of posters for each city um, which which all ties into the dream of travel and and um, you know having lavish times and and having a different experience from when you're just at home normally where you don't really go anywhere and do anything super exciting um, <laughs> maybe some people do um, and so and so I think that's that's a really important thing um, that we were discovering today is that is that your brand and your brand promise as a brand is really is really permeated throughout everything and so it affects even the way you create content maybe even the style of stories you tell um, so yeah I just wanted to talk about that um, you may have seen that this camera is is a lot sharper than the last time so what we've done is we've got up to we've, we've done three weeks of daily episodes and uh, we've had some really good feedback so thanks everyone for um, your emails and uh, and texts and everything else and we've decided to up a little bit so we've bought the Lumix G7 and we've got a new um, Rode microphone we we used to have the I can't remember what, what it's called it's like a shoot and play it's like a uh, I think it's not a condenser or it is a condenser and we've got now a powered microphone with a can you see the fuzz with a dead dead rat on it um, and <laughs> it's just I don't know a, bil a billion times better we were shooting a product video the other day on the on the old camera and then I did uh, another a new shot with this camera and we compared them and it's like what the hell are we doing with anything that's not this camera so it shoots 4k native it's got a micro four thirds lens uh, and it's got a what is it I think 14 to 42 mil lens on it for anyone who cares and uh, yeah we're, we're shooting native 4k resolution right now I mean I've down resed it and put it on U YouTube at 1080p um, but yeah we're just we've we've done a bit of vlogging and so now we we feel like we're getting into a, a rhythm of it and um, we've up some 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 stuff now I need some machinery that can actually keep up with it because <laughs> all I've got over here is like a an old MacBook um, so we've got a Mac, Mac, MacBook Pro um, with I don't know a trillion gigabytes of RAM or something which is going to help us do 4k workflow um, I'll tell you how that goes but for the last few days we've been super busy doing a range of things some of the things which I obviously can't tell you about yet um, and that's why a lot of these have just been shot at night at my house because there's just the day is so rammed um, but tomorrow's going to be a lot more fun on the vlog because we're going to be on the road tomorrow I get up at four o'clock a.m. Um, and go to the airport meet up with Nathan and Andre and the team uh, and we fly over to Sydney to go to the SMPTE event and meet a whole lot of you which is going to be cool so we're taking a whole lot of footage we'll be doing a daily vlog there which will be all about travel and meeting people and hearing stories about how everyone's becoming a media company um, we'll even have some beautiful drone footage um, through Sydney as well so it'll be um, visually a lot more fun tomorrow um, even if the the thought process might be a little bit more fragmented as we meet so many people all right thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow